All right, time to kick it with your best friends in the singing industry. You know, the mates who know some stuff, but you can still have a pint with. It's the Naked Vocalist Podcast with Chris Johnson and Steve Giles. Hello! <laughs> Big energy. Yes, 54. Episode 54. You need to bring this kind of energy when you've got someone like KJ Rose in the house. Oh, wow, the weeders. <laughs> yeah, so KJ Rose is the, is the big name for today. And this, this show, yeah, so the, the energy is obviously, I mean, you can't be in her industry without having bucket loads of energy, let's face it. Um, number one and for anybody who's like mm, is this episode for me um, well her industry is performance vocal coaching and KJ Rose has worked on all kinds of TV shows with all kinds of big names and it's kind of her remit to get the best performance out of someone to to get them out of their shell to get them um, trying new things and taking risks when it comes to getting on stage so if that's you, if you feel like you need a zhuzh, you need a nudge, then we got KJ Rose giving it to you, bringing it. Um, yeah, so, so true, isn't it? I mean, I just feel the more the life goes on and the more you interact with people and artists and uh, performers in general, that, you know, we study skill to help people and to get them on stage, study confident stuff to help people get on stage, the mind. But one of the biggest skills that I've seen you can have is uh, energy to motivate people. It's so obvious to me that if uh, you are, you want someone to do something, you've got to be all in. Well, you, well if you are all in, then it's going to it, it encourage them some more than, than if not. Yeah, yeah. And this is where I'm not, I'm not just saying that if you are just 150 miles an hour, that's, that's all you need. To, to encourage someone to do something, but it's definitely a, a big player. And KJ not only has the skills and the experience in uh, language and helping people um, progress, but also, yeah, her energy is just such a, such a force. <laughs> it is a, it? And an amazing sense of humor as well. She's yeah. so cool. Um, yeah. But did you have some, did you have a request for our listeners, Steve? Yes. Well, let me begin. <laughs> Take your time, mate. I would like everyone to we, stop what they're doing right, right we, now. We, we, include oh. me. This is my, <laughs> it's my business as well. Yeah. You did say, did I have a request? But okay, we <laughs> would like, we would like everyone to stop what they're doing right now. If they're on the treadmill or if they're uh, driving the car, pull over. Pull, pull the tre treadmill over. Yep. Illegal. <laughs> um. <laughs> Can you imagine it now? Someone just trying to pull over a treadmill in, in the gym. Film it. What are you doing Film, it. Film <laughs> it and send it into us. That's our request. No. <laughs> Could you stop whatever you're doing and go to the nakedvocalist.com forward slash iTunes and well, there you will find a redirect <laughs> to the iTunes Review Center. And, our our um, page. Our page. And then you can go down and give us five stars, no less, and say what you love about it, how much it's helped you. Because there's two reasons for this, probably three. Chris is going to give you the third one. I'll give you the first two. The first one is, it's a wonderful thing to do. And it will make you feel brilliant for the rest of your day that you've, that you've helped someone. Second, that um, more people will find out about us. And that is great that the news is spreading. Third? Yeah. Um, if you need it. Actually, and this is the honest truth, not a just a, I'm getting you to review. But um, we don't necessarily know exactly how we help people out there we just know that we do and the people that get in touch with us tell us how and why but the reviews are an amazing way for us to find out what works for people and hence we can keep making content in that direction um 
from checking out what the overwhelming majority is, whether it's vo- we helped you with your vocal technique, um, we help you get to work every day without uh, s- turning around, <laughs> giving up. <laughs> um, yeah. It could be anything, but yeah, which, whatever it is, please include the, in the five star review why we help you, how we've helped you, if we have at all. Um, that'd be amazing. Something that's, something that's really interesting for me as well, which I hope. I mean, our survey is banging. People are doing that every 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 um, week as well, which is really good. Um, and I haven't looked at there recently, but um, I'm sure one of the questions does revolve around what you do as a uh, with, with your singing in your life and that's really interesting to us as well isn't it yeah uh, and finding out what, what everyone's doing with their singing to find out um what is the uh, what is the, the demographic that we help most indeed we put a big word there steve thanks so so yeah go and do that uh, the naked vocalist.com forward slash itunes you'll be redirected um but for now we just have to give it up to the energy Mm. This is KJ Rose and the Rose Effect. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are today with KJ Rose. Woo! All right. <laughs> you got to big up yourself. <laughs> this is, this is going to be the most high energy of recent podcasts. I, I think, think we're going to have to calm her down at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so KJ Rose of the Rose Effect, creator of the Rose Effect, artist, artist development and performance coaching. Helping artists hone their craft and maximize their performances by expanding their perceived capacity. Yes. I uh, remembered all of that off the top of my head. <laughs> now, KJ has Good. worked with people like Justin Timberlake, Janet Jackson. She's been on shows helping performances with the Kardashians and um, also lended vocal for people like R. Kelly, Mario. One of my favorites. Personal favorite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I love was, his stuff. Yeah. I, so, R-, R. Kelly was actually a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> my, my download double life was actually. Oh, you. You know, because in the movie, like he's like getting interviewed and it's like they were throwing all grits at me and stuff. Like I used to absolutely love that record. Amazing. Yes, we. I did the I believe I can fly performance. No him. way. A little bit more earnest and inspirational. That's what. That's what literally sent him. I mean, he's big anyway, and then he yes. went literally stratospheric with that record From that, for sure yeah so so all that chicago all that said all those people did we miss anything did i miss anything out on that intro well let me just say i'm from chicago i um lived in new york for many years and upon getting there my very first introduction into the professional singer's life was singing with biggie smalls on no his way album. yeah he had an album, um, double album, Life After Death. I sang a song called Play a Hater. Oh, I love Play that one. Play a Hater. And, um, and then from there, I was on Heavy D's album, uh, a song called Big Daddy. I don't know if it played over it. You can be my big daddy. Steve, do, do, are you a fan um, of Heavy D? Yeah, it's one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no you gotta get to know that song. <laughs> So that was like my first introduction. I was doing a lot of backgrounds for albums of rappers before singing rappers actually became a thing. So I did A Plus and AZ and Dead Presidents in common. And so that was my my kind of first entree before I started touring with different artists. And my first tour uh, came about through a chance meeting with Kelly Price who we just kind of took to one another, but she never heard me sing. And a week later, she said, do you want to go on tour with Puffy? Thank God that I could actually hold a note because it worked out. And I did the No Way Out tour with Puff. That was my very first tour. Um, And it was myself, Kelly Price and Carl Thomas as the singers. Wow. That's incredible. Mm. Yeah. So that was, that was the, the first tour. And then I, but I was working a nine to five. So let's go back. Like my day job was at Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. And by night, I was doing as many open mics as I could. And because I had such, I loved performing, but my body physically got sick when it was time to perform. And so, you know, I was like, how can I take this and let it be a more fueling to me than actually be a debilitating 
a thing. And, and so that's what, where repetition came into play. I was like, I just have to keep doing it. There's no way to get around it. Like my body just has an adverse rel relationship with getting on stages, but I had such a love and an affinity for it that I just had to keep going. So that was by night. And then that's how I started to kind of hone my skills and, and, um, and just decide I had to make a choice that this is what I wanted to do. And in making that choice, I realized that it was the repetition and the preparation that was really going to, to make for a successful performance. Wow. So, you, you must yeah. have, do you run into a lot of singers who have that sort of psychosomatic element of getting on? Yeah. Stage? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, a lot of it came from, and I think that's what kind of transcended me to, from performer to performance coach. Um, like I said, I, I believe the performer in me actually informs the performance coach because I understand the heart of a performer because I live it and I breathe it. And so I always know to come in um, and understand where they are, you know, not speak above them, but really just come in, but make them rise to my level of energy and level of expectation at the same time. So I, I encounter a lot of singers that have such a great gift, but there's something that happens as soon as they hit the stage where they disconnect from the emotion of the song and it becomes more survival mode. You know, like how do I just get through the song? And nobody wants to perform from that space, you know, of like, let me just hurry up and finish this. You didn't serve anybody. You know, your job is to serve the song, to serve the emotion of the song. And, and in doing that, the audience is served. But if you never really give yourself a chance to be present in it and to have a real intention and a deliberate awareness, then it's like, what is the point? Blimey, yeah. Mm. And you know, it's, it's like, like language is, is when, when you say things like that, I think back to the sort of language that I hear from, because um, you know, as vocal coaches, you would do like performance nights, wouldn't we? Where we would get like, uh, like you know, the novices, amateur singers who mm -hmm. want to experience a performance. So you, on the one hand, you've got like a, a performer who only really sings once every four months and then gets ill right before that performance. Right, so they're, right. They're, pissed, they're pissed off about that. Yeah, yeah. And then, or then you get someone who's about to go on stage and the first thing they say is, let's just get this over and done with, which is like right. putting them in that survival space straight away. Yeah. You no, know it's not going to be a yeah. serving performance from the get go. Well, it's interesting right. though, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure you, you can elaborate on this, Katie, if you could. Um, but, but, that's the is that that's the case of actually the survival mode is in place with all of us at all times, right? But it's more about the the, the result is a is um is an outcome of how we deal with it as a person. So right. if you if you're the one if you're the one that is um let's get this done, mm -hmm. you're more of a you know fighter in the survival modes, right? The fight, flight, or freeze so i'm wondering there's another, there's another outcome here which we used to experience was um let's just get this done and let's get paid <laughs> ah yes and then there's that yeah. <laughs> just joking yeah. or am i how are you but yes yeah, so uh, right. you, you see, you see a, a variety of different outcomes as to how people deal with this yeah right? and it requires you know it's new messaging you know, across the board, because you you revert or default to survival to survival mode because you don't have anything in your toolkit to hold on to. So my job is always to build the wheelhouse of experience, of examples, of things they can grab onto when they feel like they're going down. Like, how do you go back to that baseline of? you know, this is what I've prepared. This is my go-to. When I veer off, I can always have a safety net of sorts, but that's how you grow. Like if you can't take chances and try new things in the midst of a live performance, then you don't know what you're capable of. And so then every venue, every art, every audience will be treated the same. There'll be no new inspiration. You know what I mean? You won't pull, your wheelhouse will just be empty. So my job is to kind of replenish that, add to it. I always tell the singers, I'm not there to really give you anything. I'm just really there to uncover, you hmm. know, what is already present. You know, they already have it. But, you know, I feel like my seven-year-olds have tapped into more of their own kind of genuine sensibility than my 35-year-olds because we just, we kind of accumulate so much stuff and so much bad messaging that, you know, it kind of pushes down 
our very kind of innate sense of performance and of freedom. So we lose that over time, whether it's the things we tell ourselves or the things we allow other people to, to say about us. Awesome. So, so, so in yeah. terms of, you mentioned toolkit there then. So mm-hmm. you know, I know it's very hard to give generic advice, but what do you, what do you find is a common theme or a common tool, which you would ask singers to focus on in that moment of I've lost, I've lost connection and I'm just a bit fire or flight. Right. I would say the common tool is it's again, not enough to just have a song that you are um, that you have an affinity for just because you either like the artist or you think the song sounds good on your voice. The commonality that one must have between the song and your performance of it is a relatability factor. Like, where does this experience take place in your life? Like, you have to have a, why did, if you wrote this song, like, I should forget that there was even an original singer if it's not you, right? So. Um, what made you write the song? Um, what made you gravitate to the song? Where in your life did this happen? Who the person was? Where were you when this happened? Like all of these things play a real part because you have to create the visual for yourself first before you can give the audience a visual. And if you're just singing it and it's all surface, then that's what the audience re- is receiving. But if you are singing a song like by midnight, I couldn't understand why you left me. That was Johnny. That was Johnny in my life. And I was standing right there and he left me in front of the, the bus stop. You know, you've got to figure out real life scenarios. You can't, it's not enough to say if this happened in my life, it's got to be more when this happened in my life, this is how I felt. So we can't pretend anymore. Like the songs that we're choosing, the songs that we're writing have to have a very personal um, effect on us. And that personal effect is what we then push out to the audience. So relatability, how well do you relate to the song that you're singing is first and foremost, you know, uh, those lyrics. I always tell people, recite the lyrics first. It's It's a conversation before it's a song. And you'd be amazed at how many people have a problem with actually just saying the words like they get shy when saying the words, but they can sing all day. But I'm like, but before you sing, you're missing an important step because now you're singing at me. You're not singing to me. But if you break it down and make it as mere as I am reciting these lyrics and in reciting them, I'm actually choosing the words in these lyrics that I want to give power to. So I always have my students underline where you want the emphasis to be. And then if we did something called visual punctuation, I want them to write it down and then add the punctuation to each of the phrases. You know, are you saying, I love you, you know, and it's just a mere period. Are you going, I love you. And then it's an exclamation point or I love you. And that's a question mark. And those things really take, you know, full on flight when you're performing them, because now you have a base and it could change. But for someone that, Um, does not know how to place emotion. This is the very kind of sure, safeguarded way that we can start placement in that emotion. And then once you start growing as a performer, then you can just go as wild as you want. But those are a few tools. I love that. (laughs) Just to to rewind a tiny bit, you said something that was really nice. And that was, yes, the um, singing to me, not at me. Yeah, um, and and I, I think that's 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 really um really poignant, and and I am with you on there seems to be a void between when someone is singing for the sake of singing or singing because they like the sound of the right. singing as opposed to singing because of the expression of the song, and you can feel it. It's kind of unexplainable a lot of the time. What, what I've also recognised in industry, KJ, and I don't know, I don't know how you feel about this, but. It seems to be increasing that especially the younger demographic are singing for that reason. Right. So what do you say to 14 year old Sally who, um, who is, who wants to out and out sing Nicki Minaj songs? Right. right. Sorry to Sally who's listening for, <laughs> for rumbling you, but you know, deal with it. <laughs> deal with that one. Sorry, Sally. Um, I would say figure out, what your connection to Nikki is like, you know, why are you singing? And one of the questions I ask first and first and foremost is why do you sing? 
why are you performing? And a lot of people are just like, ah, well, it's all I know. I've been doing it all my life. Or my mother, you know, has been pushing me. But there's no real heart. Like, you know, what what is the impetus for your performing? Like, because you could really just do it in your room. You know, if you just love singing and you love the sound of your voice, nobody ever has to hear it. But there's got to be a reason. Like, what do you stand for? I always say, give me three things in which you feel like you can offer as a singer, you know, and then three things that you feel are distinguishing about yourself. Like, why do I care that you're a singer? You know, but first, why do you care? You know, what is it about what you do that you believe that the world should hear, the world should know? And so that those are questions I believe that the Nicki Minaj singer, Sally, should answer, you know, before or any 14 year old that is just kind of taken by this new kind of social media going from obscurity to notoriety so quickly um, and not really understanding that it is a process, you know, and that what we hear a lot of times is years of the process finally coming into fruition, you know? And so a lot of times they're thinking like, let me rush and hurry up and get there. Wherever there is, they think that it's an overnight thing. And so I would say, go back and study Study the people that um, really make you feel something and then figure out why you want to be a performer because it's a responsibility in that more than just let me just sing at the audience. No, true. And you know what? Um, I think I think speaking to the coaches out there um, mm -hmm. would probably relate to something that you said, which was um, what if they are there because their parent wants them there? You know, mm -hmm. in which case, you know, you might hear teachers often have frustrations about, I just can't, I can't seem to find the drive in this person to even just to practice, you know, there's always motivational issues on that, but yeah, or to give a convincing something, let out some emotion. So how, how often has it occurred in your experience where you've come across someone who actually maybe has uncovered that they don't really want to do it, even though right. they're at the workshop, what happens with that? Right. I have, um, I guess I have maybe two examples of that. And on one hand, it was like pulling teeth to get this artist involved. And, you know, and I think the more I would just have conversations with them, of, you know, what type of songs do you like? Do you just like, you know, to hum along with them? Did you really want to be a performer or did you, are you surrounded by people that are like, oh my God, you have a really good voice. You should do this as opposed to you should just enjoy your good voice. Um, and so I've gotten, you know, students that, and at the end of it, they're just like, you know what? I don't really want to be a performer. I just enjoy singing, but I don't want to make a career out of it. So I've gotten people to actually say that, to get to that point. And to really, because sometimes, you know, I have parents that probably wanted to be singers and so they didn't <laughs> get there. And so now they're like pushing their child. They're like, you got this. And so I, I can always kind of pinpoint where the passion is coming from. And so, you know, because it doesn't serve me like I only like to it's 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 not fun for me if I have singers that don't want to be there. You know, part of it is if they come in with a level of excitement, then I can take you anywhere you want to go. But if I have to help you to actually enjoy singing, that's no fun for me. And so I'm quick to say, you know, this is not really worth the check because it feels like work for me. Um, and then I have singers where it's like, you know, the first day I got one singer, she came in and she was nine, I think, nine or 10. And she barely wanted to talk. Like it was almost like she had to have somebody speak for her because it was such a whisper and she was so shy. And, you know, her mom was like, you know, come on, I know you can speak. Da, 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 da. And it had to be that she came into it in her own time. And so now she's walking in, KJ, I need you to play number six on so-and-so soundtrack on the Hamilton, you know? And so <laughs> it just took time. So I really had to just manage the expectations of the parent and say, I see where you are going. It's a very macro sense. You want to go from zero to a hundred, but I want to take them day by day. Next week, I want to go to one and next week I want to go to two. So we find ourselves at a hundred. And so that just served the artist better because I was able to take my time and to develop them at their own pace. So, you know, it's a lot of like management, I think, in, as, as it pertains to the artist and the young artists, especially, especially and, and the parents. Yeah. So, and, and then also, you know, not letting them 
in the room sometimes, you know, because you won't get the fullness of that performer if they feel like they're being judged, you know, um, or, you know, I have one parent when she will, she'll get frustrated, you know, and be like, you know, you got this. And I was like, Hey, and then the, the baby might cry or, you know, and it's just because their desire to please. And so then I actually take myself from the coaching and I go into the, we're going to have fun. I'm your girl. Let's just sing whatever. There's no judgment on this. Shoot for the stars. And in it, there's still a little coach on the side in the back. She's just not present. But I'm taking notes of those things that she does well when she's just having fun. Right. And because that's really sh that should always be the basis of it. Are they enjoying themselves when it feels like work? Then um, I think I get less of a willing performer. Yeah, I like that. And, and, and you know, the basis that I've used in the past is um, this is very, very vague. It's obviously based on whichever psychologist you want to pick out, but uh -huh. Maslow's hierarchy of needs of confidence versus growth, you know, and, and once that stability is there, then we can grow. And, uh, you know, I've, I've based a lot of what the, the advice I've given over the years on that, which is this kind of 360 of you're playing with, you're comfortable, cool. Now we can stimulate you in other ways that maybe you wouldn't have been open for when you weren't so comfortable. Right. And so would you say in your line of work, you are, is the ratio heavily swayed towards removing the barriers to become comfortable? Um, I would say I probably get both um, those that I have to actually make comfortable. But I think the only reason I'm able to still um, touch and, and feel like I'm a part of, of what they're doing is um, when they have such a passion. So sometimes you can be uncomfortable, but you really want to get it. You know, if there's a willingness, you know, to grow, then I can get you to comfort because there's some exercises that I do that are super, super extreme. And you're kind of looking at me like, why the heck are we doing this? <laughs> but, um, and then once I break those barriers, then you're right. There's so much more room for me to start adding to their performance, but I really can't do anything if they're uncom uncomfortable because, and it has to be a natural comfort because even if it's just like, if it's a pseudo comfortability, anything that I'm trying to build will fall. It's not going to last, right? Because it all starts from this very um, solid sense of, you know, I, I know who I am as a singer. I know what I have to offer. I'm comfortable in that. And now I just want to grow and explore other ways that I can communicate to audiences, you know, across the world. So, yeah, in that regard, I... If I answered your question, did I answer your question? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah no, absolutely. And you, so, you yeah. Have some people do benefit from the old baptism, baptism of fire approach, where it's just like, yes, you might I not get comfortable unless you go really past the mark and go, if I can be that much of an idiot. Yes. in a room like be, be a chicken or something i'm probably gonna probably gonna go everything else is fine and, and that's what that. i that's some of the things that i do i'm just like okay i want you to sing this song like you're being chased by birds and they look at me and i'm like <laughs> yeah because i'm like trying to shock their systems i need to shock your system like i don't have time sometimes <laughs> so you know if i'm working with people over 10 weeks versus if i'm working with them in a workshop i have to shock your system really quickly Right. So if I can do that, then it becomes less daunting to bring you back to stand here and sing. Right. Now we can get somewhere because now you are you're not judging yourself anymore. You know, the goal is really how can you pre approve yourself before you put yourself and present yourself in front of someone else, whether it's an audition or an interview or a performance. Like if you pre approved yourself, then you're not really standing in the midst of a rhetorical performance meaning you're asking permission to do this like you're never going to win if it's rhetorical you're never going to win if i can poke holes in the story that you're telling because then i can place myself in your story and then it could be anybody but how can you make your your story so explicit that is so specific to you in your experience in your past that nobody else can stand in this form of truth for you so, yeah, I just I, I, I'm all about shocking systems because they look at me and I was like, yeah, this is happening. Let's go. Yeah. You're getting pecked. 
Who yes. are these birds? <laughs> yeah, yes. remember, remember it. Like, and then I go as far as saying, I am the bird. Let's go. <laughs> you know, really, do you put, on, you put on a beak and just run around? Yeah. I know. Put on a beak, but I'm very committed. I'm very committed. <laughs> I do. Bring in the swarm. <laughs> and if I feel like they're not giving me what I need, I was like, these are angry birds. Okay. Ah. And now you're trying to protect your baby. And they've got guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're too so far. You kind of, oh, right. too far. <laughs> But, you know, then it becomes, okay, let's add a layer. You know, people kind of go into a different mode when you say, now you're protecting your baby sister from the birds. Now they're not in their head as much because it's not really about them. Now they've got to save somebody. So it's just like all those different kind of various um, scenarios that can help shift someone's perspective so that when they come back to a very standard one, they can just go in. Sure. So, so I, I'm quite interested now. Like, if if you if you're trying to get into somebody's sort of psyche and make them feel <laughs> yes. comfortable, whatever. Um, what 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 if they're still not quite? Th- you feel like they're actually committed, but they're not physically connecting to the songs in terms of physical gestures, hand movement, right. head positions. Right. Um, do you prescribe specific physical movements to people in that in that respect? And if so. What I do. Someone, what could someone try to, to be authentic and not just put a hand in the air and then right. back, back down again? Oh my God. I, was, I, I tell my singers, I'm like, it looks like somebody said, when you get to this word, you should kick your foot or you should put your... I was like, it, it's, I'd much rather you stand with your hands at your side and, you, and, and see all of... It should be a visible movement in your stillness, right? I should feel that in you singing, there's something in that wants to break outside of you, even though you're standing there with your hands on your side, because that's more sincere than here's your hand. And I also tell them, you know, when they do these very small gestures, I'm always like, look, I don't know if you're shooting for, you know, small venues, but I'm shooting for stadiums. And the hand gesture you did only works for the person in the first two rows, but it's never going to work for person, the person in row ZZ and the nosebleeds. You know, so I'm always like, so you got to commit to whatever movements they are, commit to them, make them count. So first I see what their natural kind of gestures are. And I try to take from that natural ability. Um, And if they're singing, like the other day I did a workshop here, there was one girl, every time she got to a part, her hands, hands would do this and I would just stop her. I said, stop, look at yourself. What is that? And they're like, I don't know. And I was like, okay, so sometimes you have to show them. You know, you sh- I show them in the playback. I record them and I show them because sometimes just saying it's not enough. Or if you stop them dead in their tracks and they're just like this, I was like, what are your fingers doing? And she's just like, I don't know. And I was just like, okay, just relax. Now let's go back to, you know, so it's sometimes I'll have them hold their hands out while they're singing so that there's no, there's no committing to any moves quite yet. They're just like this, but they are not... Um, But it just kind of gives them an even very level playing field. Stand here, now go down, so that when you're singing, I can actually feel like you want to project your body towards me. Um, There's also some other um, things that I tell them. Uh, One in particular is that you should always perform as if you have hearing impaired people in the front. So if they can only see you, if you have a one dimensional expression, then it's a one, it's a long run on sentence for them, right? If your face is the only way that you can tell the story or if they can um, differentiate between you singing a sad song or you singing a happy song, what does that look like? If I was to press mute on you, if you were performing, if there was a televised performance, what does that look like? And so it really helps them to understand and to see themselves and to understand there should be shifts. I should see the difference between the verse and the chorus and the bridge. But if I, if your face looks the same, pretty much I can go to the bathroom, I can go get popcorn, I can come back and it's the same performance. So what is going to keep me in my seat? And it's got to be you performing with a sense of there's a beginning, a middle and an end. And what does that look like? You know, if you come in hot trying to tell me a story like riffing from the beginning, like Dah! most times you tell your friends, hold up, start me from the beginning 
what happened, right? <laughs> so then you take them back to, okay, this is what happened. I say, because by the time you get to the chorus, your, your whole point of the first verse is to give me information, right? I'm not an ambassador for you yet. I don't know you. This is like for new artists that don't have the following yet. So if I don't know you, you're an opening act for the act I really want to see. Um, I can't sing along with you yet. You know, what is it that you can do to help me to kind of become a, a part of what you, you're doing? Like, I want to be included. How can you include the audience? First, it's to give them a little bit of the information. By the time you get to the chorus, it's really just reinforcing that first verse. That second verse, now you give a little bit more emotion because now you're just like, I'm sitting back as an audience member like, okay, I got it. By that second chorus, I'm like, dang it, I believe it too. Forget him. Forget Johnny. I don't know why Johnny is the person. Forget, you know. <laughs> he's done a lot of bad you, things in his he's life. He's done a lot of bad things. Guy. But you have to build up to that, right? You have to build up to that. And then, you know, also separate from that, I tell people, also sing like there are visually impaired. They're blind people that you're performing to, which means they only have the ability to hear you, right? So there's got to be something in the way you communicate that still gives me a beginning a middle and an end. They cannot see you. They can only hear your emotion. So your movements don't matter to them, right? But if your body is, is committed to telling the song, then your, it, you'll project, your words will come out. Your words will have a level of emotion, a level of expression that someone that cannot see you can still feel you. And that is the point of it all, people. Sorry, well, drop, <laughs> drop, drop every mic in the room. Um, it's obviously I love this, and uh, makes I feel like I learn. You know, with every workshop, you know, it's like you'll never, you'll never be able to use the same communicative skills for one person as you would for the next. So I'm always in um, a constant state of learning, like. And, and armoring myself with as much information that I can to break down that singer that maybe won't respond well to, you know, some of the more extreme um, cases where I'm having them run after the birds, you know. So what is it that I can do to help that person, you know, break down their level of communication and, and their uh, ability to interpret, you know, what I'm saying. So I'm always just trying to collect as much information as I can so that I can speak to any artist that's possible, which means I'll be working on this forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I love, there's a couple of things you said there that really, really work for me. Um, and it starts with the conversation, the comparison to the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then you went on to the awareness and uh, conscious control of what you're doing let's just mm -hmm. say within that conversation and that really yeah. worked for me in 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 quote-unquote real life as well in real uh, life yeah you know because uh, <laughs> I guess what we're saying is that there are some people let's just take Chris for example oh um, there you go. come who, on I like it oh, you know when, <laughs> when when they're telling a story you're gonna which, which I'm really good at you're gonna switch off Mm -hmm. yeah, because you're not stimulated. <laughs> that what I was thinking. You're not stimulated by their whatever they're doing in that moment. It might okay. be really important what he has to say. Probably not, yeah. but it might be. Um, but then it, the way he delivers it just may not stimulate the person he's talking to. And, and, and when you said um, when you said about a, <laughs> his face, can we just say this, this, we're talking about Johnny? Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. 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 Johnny yes. Bastard. Yeah. Let's put it on him. <laughs> Johnny. Chris is like all the same. Yes. <laughs> However. Um, and again, another another thing that really triggered something in my mind that you said then was um, was about when people don't know you, because yeah. let's face it, we because we are friends in this triad, and mm -hmm. we are more likely going to listen to Johnny, whoever, yes. whoever <laughs> because we know him, Krajani. Johnny, because we know, <laughs> because we know him a little right. more. But yeah. but you know, and and equally, the, if you go in, into a party and you and you don't know people, that you do, you are more conscious of. Well, if you're empathetic, you're more conscious of <laughs> how you're delivering the what you want to say because you want the yeah. person to right. So this yeah. is a great, it's a great comparison that yes. for me. Yeah. Um, and so if if we're looking at a system, there's no systems. Let's call it a mixture of components that you're talking about a here. A mixture of components. Yeah. It, it's um the uh, awareness of what you're currently doing, whether that be physically or audibly, 
Mm -hmm. and then and then delivering and then and then uh awareness of what is as you you say uh, the the expansion of their capacity i think that was on on your um on your website perceived Perceived, right (laughs) awareness of that and then so it gets to a point where you are someone that delivers that stimulation in a Mm -hmm. way that is authentic and natural because you've explored new ways that expanded your um capacity perceived. yes perceived <laughs> is that a nutshell <laughs> yes that's really good you no, can quote you... me on that it's a bit fractured it's been trodden <laughs> on a few times but it's pretty good yeah what a mate yeah yeah no but it's it's Don't so to to. on point it's very on point um because it it does start with um who you are you know like what is it that you stand for? What you represent? Why do you sing? Where are you singing from? It's it's breaking it down and going to the basis. So people come into me and they just want to sing. And I'm like, well, let's talk first, you know, because I want to understand what your um, inspiration is. You know, what is your intention? Like, do you want to, are you just here to empower people? Do you want your message to change perspectives? Do you, are you singing about love? Like, where do you sing from? You know, do you sing from hurt and you want everybody to know that they can, you know, they can get past this pain? Are, are you trying to collect people that feel exactly the same way that you do and bring them along and say, we can cry together? You know, so there has to be an intention like and they will always shift like what you feel is your intention or your desire to sing today will be different tomorrow. Um, and so it is assessing where you are and closing the gap between where you want to be and where you are and what that looks like and, and really building such a wheelhouse that no matter, you know, what venue, cause it, it becomes quite boring. I think for your band and for you, if you have to tour the world singing the same songs, you know, for 12 cities. Right. So it's like, but you can't cheat the audience because that's your 10th time you know, you've got to sing it like it's your first. So you should always be collecting inspiration. You know, um, there's one thing, one ex- another exercise that I have my students doing, um, and that's performing on their backs. Singing the song, it's shifting perspectives because the level of relaxation and freedom and the collection of inspiration that you have on your back um, will change when you get back up to sing. So it's really like bottling up what that feels like, you know, and so many people like the, that had one performer, you know, again, she had a great voice. So she relied on her high notes. She relied on, this is my go-to. And I'm like, yeah, but before you go to that, I really want to know who you are. You know, now I know that you can hit that high note, but you didn't make me feel anything. The minute I laid her on this mat and she sang, it was and I still made her use her arms. I'm like, use your body, still be invested in this. She was doing movement so much more naturally because she felt less judged. She wasn't in a mirror. A lot of times when you're like in the mirror and you're looking at yourself, you just, you're really not singing. You're never really present. You're just looking at what you look like. You know, people are flipping their hair up or they're just like, oh my God. So they're really far removed from actually being present in the song. But there's a presence that takes place when they're laying on their back, that I always make them write down. What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Let's go back. And when you're performing upright and pull those things in, right? So it's got to be that you find a new level of inspiration for why you sing the song, whether it's a new um, event in your life or whether it is finding inspiration in that venue um, or just in that evening that you can give that person that is coming to your 15th show, the same performance as those you gave to your first. So that's one of the exercises. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so we're looking, so some people see performance as being a very like outward process, you know, like a lot of energy mm-hmm. going in that direction, big movement, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, mm-hmm. And consider that to be a good performance, but as we were talking before the the interview, yeah, there are many big artists who take very different approaches. Some right. very serious and big, and some much more subtle. Right. Um, who do you, who do you recommend some of some of the listeners go and look at as being sort of fairly exemplary performers of today, or even in the past? 
Yeah, let's see. Some of my um, favorites who really give me a show. Um, I feel like they give me a show if I was in the nosebleeds or if I was in the first row. Um, Adele would be one of them. She has no dancers. She has no, I mean, I see Did background you singers in there. She has no dentures. She says no dentures whatsoever. And she's still <laughs> able to get these words That's out. important in this process. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Get rid of them. Your teeth, your teeth are important. <laughs> um, and, you know, but yes, no dancers. She's like, she stands and she, there is a level of commitment that her entire body is a part of. Um, and you can see it. And when she's telling, she's singing those very personal, she's making it a personal a declaration with every performance. And so I would say that's the less animated performer. That's the one standing there and still finding power in her performance by using her lyrics and not really letting anything go to waste, like the ands or the buts or the oohs. You know, I always say ad libs should be emotions that cannot be bottled up in words. Right. But if you were to add words to them, what would they say? They're never to be fillers. Like so there, I feel like with with her performance, as well as with Jill Scott's performance, Jill can, you know, really like I'm taking my freedom and you just see it and I'm putting it in and you're like, yes, I believe. So mm -hmm. it is really just your ability not not in a very contrived sense, but that's why I always tell singers, you got to choose songs that you believe in. Not that you just sound good singing, not that you just like the audience, but songs that resonate on a very personal level that you connect to. Because what people will see is your level of investment in the song, your level of uh, uh, believability. And that will just exude from your body and consume the audience, right? So it's nothing that you put out before you've done the work inside so it's really your choice of songs i don't even know if i'm still on the question but i got excited no it's good <laughs> <laughs> yes, i'm also oh, the artist yeah. yeah yeah you're obviously oh, yeah, very they... good at this whole performance thing uh, <laughs> we are just invested oh, in your yeah, investment and, then you, and okay i'm back to it i'm back at yes the investment then i'm back to bruno mars Bruno, I'm going to tell you, I went to the concert and I went by myself because I didn't want to enlist anybody to go with me. And I was on the floor and I ran around. It was a Were physical. Were you Versace? I was Versace. Yeah. And yes. For the moment. Just for the moment. For like five minutes. Um, <laughs> the song's called Versace on the floor. Yes. You flipping. Hey, call yourself a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> wow and I've lost it I think I got excited there actually it's okay in that, in come that bring it on back bring it on back so Angry, I'll convert. use that in my performances <laughs> right. um, so yeah his concerts are I was physically exhausted because I ran across the stadium and I did every dance that I could possibly do um, but none of that feels contrived like all of his dance movements feel like it is so connected to the rhythm and that he's been doing this for years. And that is his way of telling you a story um, that I was, I was in, I was sold, you know, but then even in his slower tempoed songs, um, you can still see this dancer trying to come out of them. There is still, even in your stillness, there should still be activity in your body. You get what I'm saying? If you don't move an arm, it, it's, it should be so that that arm just still wants to move. That I should see it. I should see, you know, your level of investment in that. You know, and I also talked about Sade. Sade is all about mood and vibe. And she, you know, like brings you in by just her level of emotion her pure sheer vulnerability and emotion and she probably takes three steps the entire time so you know it's it's the eye contact it is the um the the ability to um show me that you care that you're not just singing at me um i want to feel included as part of your performance. You know, a lot of times we are so in our heads, we're like, you know, I've sang this song a thousand times and this is just how I do it. You know, you never really open your eyes. You're like, when I get to this point, I'm just, this is where I just go in. But I'm like, if you close your eyes, but yet you're saying, 
I want you to see who I am, but you're closing your eyes. It, it just, it's defeating. It just, you totally take away the whole purpose of, I want you to see who I am. There is something about um, the eye contact that when you can just stay in it and not be this human interlude, right? So sometimes we're like, I want you to see who I am. Oh, I am this person. Don't you see, I love you. So it's like when you're not singing, you are just here. And this is where I come in again. For our listeners, that was eyes closed, basically looking asleep. Eyes closed. Between. Yeah. Looking down and then coming back into it. I'm like, you can't be a human interlude. When I know that you're convicted is when there is quiet, when there is no singing and you are waiting for that next line to come in, but you keep looking at me. That's when I know. <laughs> that you have committed to this, you know, because that's still the performance, you know, that's still all of it. You don't get to check out. Got to be in the whole time. <laughs> and I, I'm literally going to stare at one person in my next gig for literally two hours yes. until they leave. Because <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm committed. Why? You got you to gotta stay committed. Stay committed to that emotion. I mean, you can change who you look at, but it is, you know, <laughs> you don't get to check out. You check out when that song, when that last freaking note is played, that's when you can check out. But for that whole thing, you have to commit from the time the music starts. I always tell them the song doesn't start when you sing. The song starts when they announce your name and the music starts. Right. You're already in. You don't get to be like, oh, and now here I go. Because we're looking at you, right? So get, you have to give me a visual something so that I'm just like not just you know, sitting there waiting for you to begin. Like you have to realize that there's an audience that has taken their time to come and see you perform um, away from all of their own kind of life challenges. So what are you going to give them that they, you know, would not have gotten otherwise? Yeah, it's, it's quite a common one, isn't it? The eyes closing thing. Because some, peop some people might feel like, um, I know I felt like this as well. Like I'm, my eyes are closed because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yes. it, which, which might... Yeah, it might be relevant, but um, then then it might be, well, are you singing for yourself then if you're feeling it? Right. right. Keep, the eyes, then, keep the eyes open, then it's a two-way. And it's okay to close them, but let it be a choice. Let that be a choice, not your natural disposition or your go-to when you are entering an area where you're required to be more vulnerable and you can't. You know, eyes closed are fine. Sometimes it is what you need to just ah. But at the same time, if that is the only thing you have in your toolkit, you know, it's like I just close my eyes, but it's not a real choice. It is this is where I ended up by default. That's never going to be good enough. Mm. So it's like a result of vulnerability or, or a, a result of fear mm -hmm. or a result of emotion felt or other yep. emotion felt, right? So exactly. Exactly. Lovely stuff. Wow, this was physically exhausting too. Let me sit back. I was into it. I was so like, how, does, how, does this, uh, how does this compare to the Bruno Mars concert? A lot more intense, yeah? Mm. <laughs> definitely. Definitely a lot more intense. <laughs> uh, but, and more laughter. This was, this was good. You guys are awesome. <gasps> I, I thought it would just be um, audio because when I went to look at the, the podcast, I saw that it was just audio, but I had no idea. I was like, Dinesh is like, maybe she's there. I listened to Dinesh's podcast. I was like, this is so great. But now I get it. This makes it all very real. Connectivity, people. That's right. It doesn't matter that's <laughs> internet. Just still feeling it. I'm still feeling it. Yes. Your so expressions. It, so if people want to find you, <laughs> yes. Why don't we? That sounds so wrong. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the start of like a Liam Neeson film. Like I will, like Taken. <laughs> if people want to find me, they're interested in my location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, How do they go about doing that? <laughs> my Instagram is KJ Rose Effect. That's E F F E C T. And my uh, Facebook is Kiana K E A N N A K J Rose. Henson, that's my full-on government. You have it all. <laughs> and Henson is H-E-N-S-O-N. -S um, or if you have individual questions, you can email me at contact at kjrose.com. Amazing. And but for anybody listening, we will put all of that in the supporting blog post. Um, Indeed. Somebody be, will be uh, jogging. <laughs> 
or some mm. driving. Don't recommend you write anything down <laughs> yes, in those don't scenarios. Write down. No, yes, flying a plane. <laughs> Keep it moving. Yes, Twitter is the same as well. KJ Rose effect. Great. And so you're um, cur- you're currently in the UK, having done some I work. I am. Yes. yes, I connected with Icing Magazine, <laughs> um, founded by Lynn Hilton. We did a performance workshop on the 18th. And then I head over to Cork, Ireland, uh, to work with uh, uh, VoiceWorks, uh, who's headed by Jimma. I'm going to mess up her last name, so I'm just going to say the incomparable. Thank you, <laughs> the incomparable Gemma Sugru. Um, <laughs> and so I'm excited to work with those artists, and that's on the uh, the 25th of March. And if anybody's interested in that one, they can send me an email at contact at kjrose.com, and I will connect you. Lovely. So. And so they're, they're actually, um, obviously, they're, they're, they're one-offs because you're kind of on tour right now. But um, in, in, in your locality then, wherever you are in America, do, mm-hmm. you, um, do you do anything <laughs> regular that people can, can plan for? Yep. Um, besides my one-on-one uh, clients, I also do a six-week artist development and performance class uh, that is a partnership with an acting studio. So I am off on break for a little while, but once I get back, I'll be starting another six week round of um, sessions for actors, DJs, comedians, you know, anyone that feels like there is a performer inside of them and they just need the tools to trust themselves enough to jump. So it speaks to everything across the board. All before, There's a performer in every one of us, you know, so whether it's you having to deliver a sales pitch or you having because we're all selling ourselves in some regard and at some point in time so it's how do you um know that when you present yourself in front of people that you're able to leave knowing that they saw they felt and saw the core of who you are you know because that's the biggest regret to go in because it's one thing to to get a closed door because it's just not meant for you but it's another to get a closed door because you didn't show them all of what you're capable of or who you are and so that's what those classes really help to uncover all of you know the the capacity the uh the performer the confidence level to just build all of that wonderful now presumably people can work with you online as well can they Indeed, I do Skype um, coaching um, as well, but I just prefer you come on out to LA if you can. Skyping is good. It's good. <laughs> but I just like to touch you. I like to evoke emotion. I like to shake you. Yeah, I people like are signing up, signing up already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they were t- I could hear the keyboard tapping when you said touch. Yeah. <laughs> You've given them your location. Exactly. You will touch them. <laughs> I will touch them. People I will are, shake them. Are. I will you know blast their uh, their capacity i will just shock their systems that's what i'm here to do shock systems <laughs> mm-hmm. well, definitely shocked us, yeah you? that's it that's it very Good. very entertaining to have you on and very very valuable as well to uh to everyone who's listening because uh, performance, performance can be so sometimes so intangible um and lacking yes. inspiration so thank you for everything that you've uh, you've brought to us today um, but yes. for, the, for, for now, have a lovely time in the UK and Ireland, and we'll see you again soon. Can I just say one thing, please? Yes. <laughs> I'd just like to say, Steve and Chris, thank you for this platform. You guys go hard for the performers across the board. And so thank you for bringing me in and, and trusting um, what I do enough to share it with your listeners. So I am very humbled that you chose me and continued success in everything that you guys do. Boom. Done. Oh God! <laughs> I have a tear in my glass eye. I just, I, I just dropped my mic. My there is. <laughs> I've some warmth in my dead heart. Yeah, yeah. My heart of stone <laughs> just, just literally rattled for a second. Um, thank, thank you so much, KJ. Thank, much thank you. Have thank a great you. day. Bye. Bye. Big vibes. Hey I'm coming off the back of that with big vibes, Steve. Big ones. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. And you can do that. Just a little reminder, guys. Nakedvocalist.com forward slash iTunes. Redirect to our iTunes page. (laughs) (laughs) Please leave us that review that you know you need to do. (laughs) Hey there. One, two, three, four, five stars. Okay. There are no other options. No. Okay. (laughs) Just thought we'd jump in again and let you know.
Look forward to next time. Enjoy your day. Feel good, baby. What? Huh? The Naked Vocalist Podcast with Chris Johnson and Steve Giles. 